everyone! In this video, I'm going to discuss adding and subtracting fractions. In particular, the video is going to concentrate on the basic principles to keep in mind when we add and subtract fractions, and I'm also just going to go through one example. So this video is the first of two that are dedicated to adding and subtracting fractions. In the second video, I'm going to run through more examples, including some trickier examples, so check that out if you're interested. The big rule we should note here is that we can't add or subtract two or more fractions unless they have the same denominator. So if I have 2 over 4 plus 1 over 4, to add the two fractions together, all I need to do is add the numerators up, so 2 plus 1 is 3, and leave the denominator as is, so in total 3 over 4. If I had 1 over 2 plus 2 over 3, however, I can't add these two fractions up as they are. To understand why, it's really useful to look at a visual representation of the fractions. So let's take 1 over 2. We can express this fraction visually by drawing a circle, dividing it into two equal parts, and colouring in one of those parts. So that's a visual representation of 1 over 2. Likewise, we can visualise 2 over 3 by dividing a circle into three equal parts and then colouring in two of those parts. So that's a visual representation of 2 on 3. So the problem here, which I think is clearer when we look at the illustrations, is that the first fraction tells us about halves, so we have one half. The second fraction tells us about thirds, and we have two thirds. We can't add them up as they are because they're really just expressions of numerical values, but in terms of different units. One of these values in, is in terms of halves, and the other is in terms of thirds. There are a number of ways that we can approach this problem so that we can add up these two fractions up despite the fact that they have different denominators. In my example in this video, my approach is going to be to multiply both the numerator and the denominator of each fraction with the denominator of the other fraction. So that might seem a little bit difficult, but let's just take 1 over 2. That's our first fraction. I'm going to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the number 3, since 3 is the denominator of the second fraction. So this ends up to be 1 over 2 times 3 over 3. For the fraction 2 over 3, I'm going to multiply it by 2 over 2, since 2 is the denominator of the first fraction. So working these multiplications out, for the first term I get 1 times 3, that's 3 over 2 times 3 is equal to 6, so 3 over 6. And for the next term, I get 2 times 2 is equal to 4, and that's over 3 times 2 is equal to 6, so 4 over 6. By multiplying our denominators by each other, the resulting denominator in our new fractions are now equal to one another, and in this case equal to 6. Our new sum, 3 over 6 plus 4 over 6, is just an expression of the original problem, 1 over 2 plus 2 over 3. To see why, it's good to note that 1 over 2 and 3 over 6 are what we call equivalent fractions, as are 2 over 3 and 4 over 6. Equivalent fractions are fractions that have the same value as one another. So there are a few ways to see this. Firstly, our multiplications by 3 over 3 and 2 over 2 are just essentially multiplying our original fractions by the number 1, since 3 over 3 and 2 over 2, and really any number divided by itself, is just equal to 1. Since multiplying 1 does not change the value of a term, it follows that the new terms that result from that multiplication, so 3 over 6 and 4 over 6, have the same value as our original terms. We can see this visually if we look at representing the new fractions with our circles, and you can see that when contrasted to the original circles that we drew, the new fractions shade out exactly the same proportion. In both cases, we have the same value that we had before, just expressed in terms of sixths. So now we have our fractions in terms of a common denominator, we can just add them up. So 3 plus 4 is equal to 7, so we get 7 over 6. Looking at our circles, we can see that 3 of those sixths come from our first fraction, and 4 of those sixths come from the second fraction. And that's it! If you're subtracting rather than adding, it's exactly the same process, except you would subtract rather than add the numerators. So just to briefly review, the strategy is if we have two fractions with different denominators, we multiply each fraction's numerator and denominator by the denominator of the other fraction. 
This is going to form some new terms that are equivalent in value, but which have a common denominator. Once we do that, we can add or subtract the numerator, but leave the denominator as is. In the next video, I'm going to discuss slightly different approaches to solving these sorts of problems. The approach here is really useful and it's going to work in all situations, which is why I presented it, but there are more elegant ways that might be more suitable in some cases. I'll also go through some more difficult cases where our fractions include variables and parentheses. So that's it. I hope that it helped. If it did, please like and subscribe. Hope you guys are having a lovely day or night.